Welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is seeking closure after a breakup. Seeking closure after a breakup. Before we get started, I'd like to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of the new viewers, all of the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your relationship questions. So at the end of the video, I'll show you a link where you can send in your questions and I would either answer them privately through the email or I would share them online with the collective and it can be your decision. Now let's dive into this message. Seeking closure after a breakup. I did pull a video and we have a letter. Let's watch this video. Then we're going to read the letter and talk about this issue. Here we go. The best closure that you're ever going to be able to give to yourself after a breakup is the fact that they will never ever find someone better than you. They will only find someone that fits better for them, that matches their personality better than yours did. And that does not mean that they are better than you. Or worse, they're just different, better made for them. Falling into comparison and falling into loops of thinking that you're not enough is ultimately dishonoring yourself. Because at the end of the day, we end up with the person that we're truly supposed to be with. With our perfect match. A person that has characteristics that fit our personality in the perfect way. So no, they did not find better. They found different, just like you will. Should you at least get closure from your ex before you move on? Some exes can be really cold about how they handle breakups. You didn't get a conversation. You didn't get a deeper understanding as to why this happened in the first place. They just abruptly ended things and just like that, walked away like the relationship meant nothing. So it's natural to feel like they owe you some kind of meaningful feedback as to why they are leaving. But it's a mistake to put your life on hold and essentially put your power in your ex's hand to give you permission to move forward to bigger and better things. They just walked away from you. They just treated you like you didn't matter. Why would you put your life on pause waiting for them to do you the honors of picking up your life after they left it in pieces? You deserve better. Now let's dive into this letter. She says, I really need help with this situation because I really don't know what to do. Now I am 26 years old, but back then I was 20. I had a relationship that hurt me a lot. When I was 20, I was living alone in Spain in a house that my mom bought because I preferred to live by myself. By this time, due to a bad relationship with my mom's boyfriend, they had been living together in another house, and I was really doing good by myself. I had everything I desired for a very young girl. My own money, commodities, and a lot of clothes, etc., also, I was thinking about going abroad to live in London, and suddenly I met a young guy. He contacted me by Instagram due to friends in common in this app. All right. <laughs> All right. This is another online dating situation. And we engaged very quickly. I really thought we were in love. Like I really found my soulmate. So fast. You fall in love this fast. Then you think you found your soulmate. <laughs> Not likely. After one month talking and knowing each other. He decided to come see me because I lived in another city in Spain. 
he came to give me a surprise, and it was fantastic. Then he went back to where he was living, and he communicated to me that as I was living alone, he wanted to come over and live with me. That was a bad idea. That was a very bad idea. And I didn't know how to say no. You know how you say no? You form your lips and you say no. <laughs> that, that's how that works. See? I had for myself, but for two people, the situation was going to be hard. And that's how it started. He came and we started living together. And we lack in many aspects. I had to help him so much since the very first time because he parked in a yellow line and they took his car. As he didn't have any money, I paid it for him. Later, his father gave it back to me. Since the first day, I have been helping him. I bought him a phone, clothes. I, I did so much. We were living in my mom's house. She couldn't help financially, but she paid all the bills. And sometimes his father helped us with money. But it was always money to pay bills and buy food. He never gave me money or bought something for me or helped me with the driver's license. I committed mistakes too because I didn't know how to control myself. I was very young and inexperienced. All right, wait a minute. Uh, don't. <laughs> you say that you committed mistakes too. Listen, the mistake is that you let this man move in with you. That, that, was, the, that was the mistake. So, you know, you're giving him an excuse by saying that you committed mistakes too. What he's doing is not a mistake. He's just using you. That wasn't a mistake. That was intentional. After all the struggling we were living, he decided to go back to his father. And I go with him too. We had a dog and a cat. And he decided we no longer wanted the dog. So he got rid of the dog and we go to his father's house. His father didn't want animals in his house. So he got rid of the cat too. In a short period of time, we had everything to nothing. <laughs> in his father's house, the situation was worse with less money. I checked his phone and he was flirting with other girls and also talking crap about me with some of his friends. I didn't have anything for myself, so I decided after many attempts to come live in London. I had to leave my clothes in his father's house because my plan was to stay as a nanny for a family and earn some money and then come back in about six to eight months so I can have money to pay for my driver's license. After one week in the UK, he decided to end the relationship. Coincidentally, he found a job and he told me to get half of this paycheck to help me. And I did it. Then he called me a thief, among other names. Not only he left me when I needed him the most. But I've been helping him since the beginning. He started to get worse and I started to see his true self. I decided to keep that money 
and started my own life here. He tried to come back many times. He always came to me even in three instances, either when he had a relationship or right after he broke with someone here in England. I sent him money, and when I told him that I needed that to pay rent, he blocked me and started fighting over things in the relationship. He never gave me anything back. He lied many times. I could not take it anymore because many times I did not even recognize myself in the mirror. I was a shell of myself, that young, beautiful fighter and believer of myself was gone. I went no contact. He tried to communicate many times with me and my best friend to get in touch with me. Also, many times he tried to come back. He was in another relationship. Always lying. Now I feel better. I am more stable and I want to do me. I've got myself together and I've decided to go back and get my clothes. I had to buy a ticket for the end of the month. I let him know that I was coming to get my clothes and as many times he tried to get something out of me or come back to me, I did not let him and he started lying and saying that he left my clothes in his other house. Now he's saying that he no longer has my clothes and that he gave it to another lady that came to his house. I was alone before knowing him, but I was taken care of very well. I had everything and very good quality clothes. I am renting in the UK, so I can't have many things, just the necessities. Now that I called him that I'm coming to pick up my clothes, he starts fighting over the phone for no reason. I no longer want to talk about the relationship. I don't know how to communicate with him and also lost contact with his father. So now his father is the only one who can or could do something about it. I don't know what to do. All right, from your letter, I understand that <laughs> you are concerned about these clothes that you left with him. All right. And uh, he's saying that he has given the clothes away. Now, you say here in your letter, I have been thinking of asking his father to pay for the clothes in case. He has gifted my clothes away or thrown them away. Well, it's really not his father's responsibility to reimburse you for your clothes. <laughs> you understand? You, you need to understand that. You can uh, bring it up to uh, his father. and uh, But I, I really don't see any recourse for you here. i tell you why. Because uh, you abandoned these clothes when you went wherever you went. But during that time, let me understand this. During the time when you went off to work someplace, you were planning to go back and pick up your things. A lot of times when you do that, people do just what he did. Got rid of those things. Got rid of them. When you walked out the door, he was done with you. When you left to go wherever you went, you know, to London, he was done with you. And he moved on to somebody else. 
You see, he probably wasn't that good to you when you were together. But he did push you into allowing him to move in your place. And then when he moved into his father's place, you should have stayed in your place and let him go on to his father's. All right, because him getting out of your place was really a blessing. Now, in your place, you were living in your mother's house. Okay, so you moved from your mother's house to uh, his father's house. Moving in with him was a bad idea. It, it was a bad idea. So, let me understand this. You move from your mother's house with him into his father's house with all of your clothes and whatever. Okay? Now. Then you left the father's house to go get work in London. Which looks like that you moved out. You went to London to be by yourself. To work on yourself. To start a new life for yourself. So really you left your things. You abandoned your things over there. Did they say that they would hold them for you until you came back to get them? If they didn't, if the father didn't say that, if your boyfriend didn't say that, well, then you abandoned these things. Now, you, you say in the letter that you have already purchased a ticket to go back and get your things. Good luck with that. Good luck. If your things are still there, it's possible that you can get them. But if your things are not there, then <laughs> you wasted a ticket for nothing. Unless you bought this ticket because you actually wanted to see him again. Think about it. Think about it. Most people, when they get out of a bad relationship and they left a lot of things there, most people will just walk away and just write that off as a loss. As a loss. I understand that you couldn't take all your things when you moved to London. Because you say here that you were renting a small place. And you, you, know, you could only have your necessities there. Yeah, but that's not their fault. Your boyfriend and his uh, father. That's your situation has nothing to do with them. That's your situation. You understand? I wish you well on getting your things back. But I'm talking to you like this because I want you to be realistic about this. It's a possibility that he did throw your things away. <laughs> you know? Or if other women came there and they wanted the things, he said take them. Because he never agreed to hold these things for you until you came back to pick them up. That was in your mind. You didn't say it in the letter that he agreed to hold these things for you. So, it looked like you abandoned these things. You didn't care about them. So he did with them what he wanted to. I hope that you understand this message. And I, I really hope that it helps you in some way. Number one, don't meet a man on social media. That's number one. It's a bad idea. There are only predators on social media. And this was one that you got here. A predator. He wanted to move right in with, with you right away. But then I guess when he found out that uh, actually it was your mother's house, then I guess he was ready to go, go live with his dad. You see, he didn't have anything for you. Nothing. You were in a great situation. You, you were in a home, had everything you could ever want. And <laughs> you were in there by yourself. 
You didn't have any, any worries. And you threw that away on a man that you met on social media. Threw it away. Invited this man to come live with you. And he sucked you dry. Look what happened. He sucked you dry. And then when you were dried out, then he wanted to go and live with his father. Let's go live over here so we can suck on my father. And you followed him over there. Instead of staying where you were. And, you know, work on yourself. Get your life back together. So you can get back together where you were when he met you. But no. No. You pick off and chase him. That was the, that was a bad idea too. Don't ladies don't ever do that. Don't ever move your move from your comfort to go trailing after a man somewhere. Then you move into dad's house and it doesn't work out there. Didn't work out. You all are penniless. Because he's draining, he's draining everything. That's why he's with you, to drain your resources. Understand? So what do you do? You leave that house, go to London to start over. Start your life over. All right? Now. But you couldn't take all these things. You could only take what you could carry. All right? I understand that. But they are not under any obligation to hold your things for you. It's not very many people who would do that anyway. They're not related to you. That wasn't your father. That's his father. So they have no allegiance to you or your things. You understand? So I hope. I really hope that when you get there, you're able to gather your things. I really hope. But don't be so devastated when you go there. If nothing is left, nobody is going to reimburse you for these things. Just understand what your part in it. And I'm telling you this way. So you never make these mistakes again. I realize, you know, you're young in your 20s. But you got a lot of living to do. Don't ever do this again in your entire life. Don't don't meet a man on social media. Don't allow a man to move in with you. And don't chase a man to live with him wherever he is either. Work on yourself, ladies. Love yourself. Build your own foundation. Be secure. Have your own. And if you meet a man, let him stay where he is. You stay where you are. Until you really get to know him. And that takes time. You can't know nobody in a few months. But see, when you meet people on social media, these men want to rush you. Because they have an agenda. You know, understand? They're looking for people to fulfill their needs. They're predators. I hope, ladies, that you understand the message today. When you seek closure in a breakup, it can take you down a dark path. When it's over, move on. You don't need to go back to the person you broke up with to try to talk it out, to try to figure it out or what happened. And No. When it's over, let it be over. And then you work on yourself. Work on yourself. Love yourself. And when you love yourself, it'll make all the difference in your healing process. Now it's time for today's affirmation. And we do these affirmations to help with your spiritual growth. And here it is. I choose a bright future. 
now, in the present. I choose a bright future now. The moment I start to change, the moment I am willing to bring good into my life, the universe responds in kind. I choose a bright future now. All right, people. I hope that you understand the message today. And I really hope that it helps someone. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, here is the link. Send your questions to Miss Faze World, YT at Hotmail.com. That's Miss Faze World, YT at Hotmail.com. And try to keep your letters to one page. Just summarize your situation and ask the question. And if you prefer that I answer your question privately through the email, just put it at the very top of your letter and I will comply. I want to thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you for your comments and your letters. Just keep those letters coming. And a special thank you to those that leave a donation. I really appreciate all of you. I wish you all the very best and I really hope to see you next time.